the biodiversity team is the fifth theme of the Green Schools programme. If you are currently working on this theme, your school is undoubtedly a very green place to be after almost a decade of action and caring for the environment. As we go through this short presentation, you will see that the theme of biodiversity overlaps and integrates well with the other environmental themes on the Green Schools programme and with the national curriculum. The standard two years of action on this theme should complement a great deal of the ongoing work in your school. So what exactly is biodiversity? The word refers to the range and variety of all living things. It is the diversity in living things all around us, including animals, plants, microbes, fungi, and so on. A high level of diversity among living things is important for keeping a healthy, stable environment suitable for humans to live in. There are three levels of diversity. Each one is important. Firstly, diversity within species, which is also known as genetic diversity. This is important for health and the survival of an individual species. For example, we see genetic diversity within the human species when we consider the range in people's height, the variation in individuals' build, and in eye, skin, and hair colors. It is important to maintain biodiversity at this, the genetic level, within each species. The second level of biodiversity is species diversity. This relates to the number of different species. This level of focus is probably the one that we most often refer to and the easiest one for any person or small organization or school to focus on protecting. And the final level of biodiversity that we consider is the ecosystem level. An ecosystem can be defined as a biological community of interacting species and the physical environment in which they live together. In Ireland, we have ecosystems such as woodland or river ecosystems, we have bog ecosystems, grassland ecosystems, and of course, the marine ecosystem, amongst others. As an example, a river ecosystem in Ireland would likely consist of a community that includes willow, kingfishers, otters, salmon, mayfly, and dragonfly species. All of these are connected to each other in various ecological ways. For example, the trees stabilize the banks, so a kingfisher can build a burrow there or through predator-prey relationships, such as the otter population relying on the fish population for its food. It is important that biodiversity at the whole ecosystem level is protected. You might wonder, how does this diversity in nature affect us and why is it important to look after it? Well, the simple answer is that we as humans rely on living things to provide some of the most important and basic needs in our daily lives. From the oxygen that we breathe to the food on our plates, and from the wooden beams that keep our homes standing to the wool or cotton fibres in our clothes that keep us warm. These are all important services that nature and biodiversity give to us and that we really could not do without. Another reason why it is so important that we take action to protect biodiversity is because wildlife all over the world is being pushed to the margins. The main problem is that natural areas are being changed, divided up or removed altogether. This is done for many reasons, such as to build roads, houses or factories, or to grow crops or to harvest timber. Animals, plants and other living things are losing their habitats as a result. What does this mean? A habitat is a home for wildlife and each type of animal or plant has a preferred habitat. That is, a place where they can thrive. For example, common frogs spend most of their lives on land, living and hunting in damp pastures, open woodlands or other habitats with suitable cover, and generally not far from a pond or a stream. Frogs then use ponds, streams, bog pools, drains and ditches as breeding sites. As another example, the small tortoiseshell butterfly is a popular garden visitor that can be found in a wide variety of habitats, anywhere with suitable nectar-rich flowering plants, such as these creeping thistles. However, nettle patches are an essential part of this butterfly's habitat, as the common nettle and small nettle are the food plants of this species' caterpillars, and therefore necessary for completion of the species' life cycle and overall survival. 
So when we make changes to the land, different animals and plants lose their specific and preferred habitats. So if we remove a hedge or wild area, or we build a road through a woodland, or drain the water out of a wetland, the animals and plants that had been living there will be affected. This habitat loss is the biggest problem for biodiversity at present. Other environmental impacts include litter, pollution, overhunting, pesticides, invasive species and climate change. More information on the threats to biodiversity can be found on the Green Schools website and in the Green Schools Biodiversity Handbook. To summarise, biodiversity on all three levels, the genetic, the species and the ecosystem level, creates a complex web through lots of unique strands of interaction. And like a spider's web, if we start to lose different strands, the web is weakened and becomes less resilient and may eventually collapse. We know that strands of biodiversity are being lost at present, many due to habitat loss, amongst other reasons. We must therefore work to protect and maintain all parts of this living web if we as humans wish to continue to live happy and healthy lives. So, what can we do? The overall aim of the biodiversity team is for schools to increase awareness of the importance of biodiversity and for students and staff to come up with ways to help biodiversity by taking action. A very direct way in which we affect biodiversity is how we manage our local outdoor spaces, our gardens at school or at home, our balconies or the green spaces close to where we live. You can start by following the seven steps as outlined in the Biodiversity Handbook. For the environmental review, you will see that there are two key goals. One is to map your school grounds and to see what plant and animal diversity you have on your campus before taking action. The other is to use the survey in your handbook to find out the level of understanding about biodiversity in your school. Again, before you start to take action. Once you know where your starting point is, come up with a plan of action. Identify ways to spread information about the importance of biodiversity across your school and also decide what actions you can take to physically increase the levels of biodiversity on your campus. Think of ways to improve and protect local wildlife and landscapes, whether it is in your school garden, at home, a green space in the city, your local beach or a local river. For example, you can create wood piles, book hotels and other wooden structures to provide shelter and protection for small creatures, such as the wood lice, worms and millipedes you see here. You could provide nest, roost or hibernation sites for wildlife and provide food through artificial feeders and planting schemes. Generally speaking, if we have lots of flowering plants in an outdoor space, there will be lots of nectar for the bees, moths and butterflies to feed on. These insects in turn are food to bigger animals, such as bats and birds. For the best plans for feeding bees and butterflies, visit the All-Ireland Pollinator Plan website, pollinators.ie. If we allow corners of our garden to grow a bit wild with long grass and piles of leaves, we are creating good habitat for animals, including hedgehogs, shrews and bumblebees. Wild cover, such as ivy and bramble, support lots of animals by providing great hiding places as well as food throughout the year. Planting native trees, if you have space, is also a great way to combat biodiversity loss, as well as a positive step to avert climate change. Learn about what plants are good for wildlife and be sure to plant and protect these wherever possible. There are practical materials for schools and useful links on the Green Schools website to help guide your work. Remember too, that we interact with and have an impact on nature indirectly every day through our lifestyle choices. For example, through the things we choose to buy, where they've come from, how they were made, how they are packaged and how they can be disposed of all have an impact on the natural world. Being aware of these choices, maybe researching them a little bit more and choosing the best ones to help nature 
is another way that we as individuals and schools can take action to protect biodiversity. To find out more about the theme of biodiversity and for further information, links and teaching resources, please visit greenschoolsireland.org forward slash biodiversity. Good luck with your actions.